It's time for baseball. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Minnesota Twins. 2K Sports and Major League Baseball. All about the American League, and the Twins are part of that, playing here at home. A look at Justin Morneau, no doubt. Pitchers trying to figure out how to get him out. We're in the heart of the month of May now, 2K Sports and MLB. And our starter, Kevin Slowey. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Well, one of the things you'll notice about Kevin Slowey is he throws a lot of strikes. He's not afraid of contact, and that's a great trait for a pitcher. So he doesn't have anything overpowering, but he trusts the defense behind him, and he understands the base on ball is his enemy. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Gian's got going. Scouting pick, John, who are we uh, looking at today? Leading on is Johnny Damon. He's going to lead his team off as we get ready for the first pitch. Left fielder, number 18, Johnny Damon. Slowy gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. That win coming after well hit towards the middle. And so Damon retires. Now's a good time to take a quick look at Minnesota's defensive setup. And Steve scouting anyone here? That was an everyday shortstop. J.J. Hardy's one of those guys that makes every routine play you want out there. Very good at the slow roller, getting rid of it quickly. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. Uh, 2009, the twin hit sharply towards the hole. And he steps on first. That's the second out. These White Sox, uh, the Twins did a number on them as they won. The Twins did 12 out of the 18 games they played against the White Sox. And only 80 runs scored against the Twins. And one of the reasons why the hit hard to second. Tolbert throws on to first side, is retired. Three up, three down this half inning. And uh, we'll Minnesota get to see Jake Peavy pitching. He gets settled in Number for two. Chicago. John, how do you think he's going to approach this Minnesota lineup? Well, coming off an injury-filled season in 2009, Jake Peavy's going to look to rebound. He has a fastball in the mid to upper 90s that he throws from a three-quarter delivery, a great slider, and a great changeup. He's a power pitcher who strikes people out, and when healthy, he's one of the best in baseball. And with two strikes on him, Denard Spann, he's going to have to shorten the swing. Now, if you got a chance to watch the last ball game, you saw the quality at bat he had. A runner on base, he worked the count, got a pitch he could hit, and hit the ball out of the ballpark. Good piece of hitting, and maybe the start of things to come. And it holds at 0-2. And At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Pepsi presents well, our starting Minnesota lineups. Here's a look at the Twins. So who are you looking at, John? Well, Denard Spann's the kind of guy that you can put out on the field and you don't have to worry about. He plays great defense. He's a good average hitter, high on base guy. Not going to hit a lot of home runs, but he's not going to beat you with the mistakes. He's a consummate team guy. Ball one uh, to begin this at bat, 1-0. Oh. Well, Twins losing their last game. He swings and nails a liner. And it's caught by Ramirez. And they just tried to hold him there at first. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. Steve, keeping an eye on anyone? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They wrap up the series with Minnesota tomorrow. There's another stop on the road trip. The Royals at Kauffman Stadium. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And there's another stop on the road trip. The Tigers hosting that one. A lot of road games on the way. And Justin Morneau. And swing and a miss on Peavy's pitch. 0-1. The pitch hit in the air to left center. Damon. And there's the third out. So Jake Beebe holding it down. For 
forecast tonight to be cold. Uh, definitely it's turned out that way. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. He's the league leader in hits. The pitch swung on, line to right field. And Kadayev makes the play. One down. Now State Farm with a look at the lineups who have honed in on pitchers over the last 10 games. The White Sox, number one. The Indians, second. In the third spot, the Orioles. Fourth, the Mariners. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Well, there's nothing more fun in baseball when your whole lineup is hitting the baseball. And over the last 10 games, the batting average of these two teams have been absolutely phenomenal. And that's what you love. Both teams at the top of their games offensively going at it head to head. Swing shoots this one towards the gap right center. And it's through into the gap should be extra bases. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the plate, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. And Alex Rios up. Swung on and ripped towards second. Two retired here. Now the runner will have to hold at second. Every ball club's got to have some power. Let's check out the league's top home run hitters brought to you by State Farm. Anytime you have the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark, he can change the complexion of a game with one swing. And he's done it better than anyone in the league right now. And everybody loves that long ball. It's going to be Przinski, one of the best batting averages in the league. Swing and a shot to third. And through it goes. The hit streak is on. And he scores. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Number 25, Mark Tian. Well, right there, he just got a pitch he can handle, and he delivers a big RBI for the first run of the game here in the second inning. And Mark Tian to bat. Offense, when you get it, it doesn't matter what part of the game it is. Now they've got themselves something to build on. Uh, Gary, we just saw quality at bat right there. He got the job done. When he got his pitch, he knew what to do with it, and he delivered. Well, that pitch sends a message that you can't get too comfortable in the batter's box. It's the pitcher's box, not the hitter's box. All right, first run of the game. It comes here in the second. The White Sox have the lead, one to nothing. And so Michael Kadaya leads it off. Right fielder, number five, Michael Kadaya. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Sliders in there, no balls and a strike. He has great bite on this slider, throwing it down and into the hitter. Gets away with one, and he gets in for the strike. That swung on, line towards the gap in left center. And Kadaya has got himself a single. And he's aboard easily. And that's going to bring J.J. Hardy up. Here's what's happening this Friday. It'll be the Philadelphia Phillies on the road. They travel to Milwaukee to take on the Brewers at Miller Park. Action gets started, 8 Eastern. Runner on first base, nobody out. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Cut fastball in there for a called strike. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement, down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Look out as that one runs in and hits it. Well, they set up inside, but he threw it a little too far inside. Take your base. Tolbert at the plate. Look, over that hit batter we just saw. Now two runners on base. A little rally starting here, and maybe the pitcher getting a little bit rattled. And that's in there into center field for a base hit. Ted Iyer's trying for the plate. Tagged at home, and he is out of there. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position, and they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the runs scored, you give yourself a chance to win. And Pridey's batting. Uh, two. Back up the middle. That keeps those runners at first and second. Well, sometimes it's about the fundamentals. Sometimes, though, it's about a flair for the dramatic. Well, good, solid, fundamental, flary baseball, huh? Wondo at the plate. I'm talking about the White Sox on the road. The adage of baseball, of course, 500 on the road. Well, they weren't able to do that, 36 and 45. Yeah, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that their offense needs to be a little more consistent. 
The problem with the Chicago White Sox offensively is the fact that they need to get the top of the order on base. They need to be able to create more runs with their legs. In 2009, they were a station to station. We're going to try to hit a three-run homer team. They need to find some speed and some athleticism. Not only would it help their offense, but it'll help their defense also. Well, the pitching's going to be key for them as well. I mean, if you pitch well on the road, then it really doesn't matter if your offense isn't there. You still have a chance to win those low-scoring games. When you do get offense, you're going to get a win as well. So pitching's a key. So no runs, two hits, and they strand two. The White Sox still on top. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. Designated hitter, number 30, Mark Kotze. He delivers, taps this one foul off to the left. And it's 0 and 2. Kotze just trying to punch one here. That contributed offensively in their last game with a couple of RBIs. See if he can't do it again today. the middle he just swung and missed at it gotta check his bat for a hole and it's Johnny Damon at the plate well, Johnny Damon still such a quality veteran at bat a guy that's got a little bit of pop in his bat he knows how to get on base and he's always there to score some runs fair ball swung on and missed now it's on one for Johnny Damon uh, the numbers are really impressive when you look at the offense he contributed in terms of getting on base and scoring runs Getting on for all those big bats behind him. Oh, you're right. A uh, swing and a hit to Span. This one to Kadire. As he holls it in. We get a break here and a chance to look at the leaders in slugging team wise. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Blue Jays. The Red Sox, third. Fourth, the Orioles. And number five, the Indians rounded out. Now, Gary, this club can slug like nobody else can in the game today. They go up there swinging out of their shoes trying to drive the ball, and it's paid dividends. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Wow. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Ramirez fouls it off again. Slowy with the pitch. Curveball that tied him up in knots. Swung on and missed. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no one left on. White Sox one, Minnesota nothing. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crook bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. First pitch to Span. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Strike two. Strike two. Peavy dominating in this A.B. He's got some pitches to play with. Oh. Still 0-2. Swung on, hit, fielded by Ramirez. So Span is set down. Rank wise, now let's take a look at where the Minnesota Twins sit in the American League. Second in on base percentage, third in walks. And they also show up in the top five in team batting average. You love the depth of this lineup and their ability to find holes and get runners on base. First delivery to Young. Line towards second. Beckham. Two away. Oh, he just makes every ground ball to the right side look routine. He scoops up another one and sends him back to the dugout. Here's Joe Maurer now at two down. 250 is average last season against the White Sox. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0-1. And that's the ball. He'd be too far outside with it. So he went for the backdoor slider right there, but he laid off the pitch. Good eye. A smash to first, played by Canerco. 
And he'll step on first to retire the side. Three up, three down for Jake. Quick look at Isaac Guillen looking up. Yeah, he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance run so important. And it's Paul Canerco now well, leading the league in home runs. Slow, he gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Canerco now will look to tighten up that zone. Well, here's the talk of the last game. Four base hits in that one, and a lot of confidence building around him right now. He stops at second. That will be a double. He's in scoring position now with nobody out. Well, this is just a good piece of hitting right here. No out starting the inning, and you're on and you're put yourself in scoring position. That's big. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. And oh, I'll tell you, everybody, Steve, I think notices when he gets to the plate, the attention right deficit two. disorder just sort of goes away. And here's the pitch. Hard ground and a short. So Quinton is retired. Now well, we have a moment, courtesy of State Farm. Let's see who has the league league in hits. Gordon Beckham. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. Ground ball, Morneau. There's the throw. Now Fantastic chance here. Beckham uh, made his debut in June, and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the majors. Which certainly did, and you talk to White Sox personnel, and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. And Canerco will score. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. A.J. Krasinski. You talk about a guy that's been absolutely unstoppable at the plate this series. Nine hits already, and it's not over yet. And the first pitch. Slow, he gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Well, I tell you what, for two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. That swung on and a liner here. And he gets it down. He's two for two now. Now Tremendous back, situation now for the White Sox. Third base. Well, it's now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. Now Kevin Slowey having to find a way out of this jam right now. He's got to go right at the hitter, Gary. And he's getting his thoughts together out there, and he needs to. Already down by two, and maybe more to come. Gary, the best pitchers are the guys who can flush out the bad thoughts and focus on the task at hand. He can't worry about what got him in this situation. And Tian swings and misses strike three. Let's watch K-Cam. Take a look at the two-seam faster. Well, he made that one look easy, huh? I mean, look at three pitches and a strikeout. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Strike one! Slow, he gets him to swing and miss for a strike. Here's the delivery. That one's drilled to short. Picked up by Hardy. Throws to first side is retired. They pick up four hits in the inning, but manage only one run. White Sox by two. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crock bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. It's going to be more no. If you didn't get a chance to see his last ball game, he came up with a shot, took advantage of a pitcher's mistake. First pitch to him. And swing and a miss on Peavy's pitch. 0-1. Look, Gary, the way this is going so far here in the fourth, I mean, they do have three hits. Uh, so they've had a couple of base runners, but I think that because they're not mounting hit after hit, they may have to put some plays on to get the runners moving. And Morneau set down. Let's have a look at the current state of the race with the State Farm standings board in the Central Division. It's the White Sox in first, Twins in the second spot. In third place, it's the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers.
Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And it's Michael Kadiah in the box now. Well, when you watch the Minnesota Twins play, they just have guys that seem to rise to the occasion, and Michael Kadiah is no different than that. 2009, he was a major cog in the reason why they caught the Detroit Tigers and eventually won that one-game playoff. This is a one-hopper off the wall. Safe at second. Kadiah in 09 for the Twins, a tremendous clutch hitter. At a time when they needed wins and were playing tight ball games, Kadiah had some key RBIs for them. Well, key RBIs, and he did it with home runs. He did it with singles. I mean, this guy, it, to me, is one of the better hitters in baseball as far as clutch situation goes because he understands what has to be done. He understands how the pitcher's going to approach him, too. And that makes all the difference. There's a swing and a drive. Deep right field. It's Kadiah on his way to third. Now, now the teams that have been finding the their way on base, our State Second Farm base. leaderboard on base number percentage 20. for the last 10. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Twins. Third, the Mariners. Tigers fourth. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, I tell you, when you watch these two teams play over the last 10 days, there seems to be a fight at the bat rack. Everyone wants to get up because they know they're going to get on base. These two teams have been on base so much in the last 10 days that it just makes it look like there's a crowd on the base pass. The pitchers better beat the top of their game, and they better be throwing strikes because they will take a walk. And if they do, they're probably going to come around to score. P.V. winds up for the one-two pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. They pick up no runs on a hit. Stranding man at third base. No production net from the Twins. And there is Ron Gardenhire. And you can imagine right now the inner workings here in the club trying to get this thing tied up. First pitch on the way to Damon. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one. 0 and 1. Now coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So got to be seeing the ball pretty well. And this is bounced foul to the left side. Slowy with the pitch. Johnny Damon on a swing and a miss. That's going to be strike three. A really nice sequence right there. He had good rhythm, three great pitches in a row, and sits him down. Hitter never got a chance to get his balance, get his at bat going there, John. Well, he just didn't look good right there in the batter's box. He needs to take a better defensive approach to extend the at bat a little longer. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in doubles, fourth in hits. And as you can see, that ability to make contact is there. Hitting for a very high average, ranked among the top 10 hitters in the league. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal any bases. He has hardly any speed left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. He's in there. Wow, tremendous hustle all the way from first. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Canerco's certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player, because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive them. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And, you know, you remember back to that World Series year in 2005 with the White Sox, how clutch he was for that team that entire season, and he's still that way at this stage in his career. Runner on second RBI opportunity for Carlos Quinton. So the direction here, Steve, for this lineup, just stay in charge. Right now they are. Well, now they're putting some distance between themselves and their opponent. When the bats like that, keep tacking on the runs and pull it away. And Beckham's in the box. He's averaged 391 lifetime off Minnesota. First pitch on the way. Swing and a line drive. And that's going to plate Alex Rios. Well, anytime you're a hitter, you can get three hits in a game. You're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. Well, I think we're seeing some pat lined right at the second baseman. They take care of that one. 
And he's got it. That'll keep the bases loaded. We get a chance to view the league leaders in RBI, courtesy of State Farm. All of these guys have one thing in common. With the game on the line with runners on base, they come through in the clutch and deliver and drive in the big runs. Chance to drive in a run, A.J. Pierzynski. Base hit his last time. Two outs, bases loaded. Now the first pitch. Strike Starts one. him off swinging at his shoe tops for a strike. I was an offensive machine last time out, a hitting clinic with four base hits in his last game. A line drive towards the hole, and he's there to retire the side. They pick up a run on three hits. Denied a big inning, though, as they leave the bases loaded. White Sox up three. And Pridey's batting. Designated hitter, number 11, Jason Pridey. And the first pitch. That's a strike. Peavy gets it by him. Well, outstanding pitching effort so far here. I mean, he's left three runners on base in this game. I mean, but he's just shutting down this lineup, and when he needs to make a pitch, he seems to always find a way to do it. One away. Punto at the plate. Lifetime. He's uh, picked up no hits in one at bat of Peavy. Takes that first pitch low in the strike zone. Strike one. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. It was a swing and a miss, and he's behind on two. Boy, that good late movement down, that cut fastball, unbelievable action on that pitch. Yeah. And he looks at a call third strike on the slider, two down. A good break, confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? That's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. And it's Denard Spann. He's the best base dealer right now in the division. Peavy. And he's in there easily. He'll bring Delman Young up. The guy that gets them going offensively. He can move on the bases and seem to find a way to get in scoring position. First delivery to Young. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. 0 for 3. Lifetime off Peavy. Pitch on the way. And it's 0-2 in the Camarilla cutter. Delman Young, he'll be swinging at anything close. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very oh. difficult on the hitter. And it holds at 0-2. Now Przinski sets up. Hit up the middle. Back up. And he'll step on the back. That'll do it. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. The White Sox. And here's Mark Tian leading it off in the top ten in hits. Number 25, Mark Tian. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Slowly gets him to swing and miss for a strike. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Had a real strong offensive game last time out. Three big base hits. And Tian swings and misses strike three. Well, just a great sequence of pitches. Three good choices by the pitcher and the catcher, and he finishes them off quickly. All pitchers love that. Those are short at bats. You get it done in a hurry. Hit hard on the ground to short. And Kotze retired. Here's what the Twins have in store. One game left with the White Sox. That's tomorrow. And they head up for a series against the Yankees on the road. They'll get some help from Robinson Cano. The Yankees will in that lineup. That gets underway on Friday night. And then the road trip continues. They'll face some good competition. The Blue Jays at Rogers Center. So they'll be on the road quite a bit over this next stretch. Base is empty with two outs. Slowy with the pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0-1. Let two seam fastball down and away. It's awfully tough to center that right ball and make solid contact. That time he couldn't even make any contact. 
Swung on, that is hit. And in there, he has struggled today. Now finally a base hit in the record book. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. Two outs and a man on first. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Picked up by Hardy. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on at first. White Sox three. Minnesota nothing. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. The first pitch. That's a strike. Peavy gets it by him. Boy, good pitching, good defense. They're getting it done today and obviously limiting this offense, keeping them off the board. Only three guys left on base the entire game. And that's a strike. Maurer now will cover that plate with that big bat. There's two quick strikes. Now he's ahead 0-2. Let's see if he goes out of the zone to see if he can get the hitter to chase. Hit on the ground, up the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. Throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. And that'll bring Justin Morneau to the plate. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. That's perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. And keep that in mind next time around. We'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. 1-0 count. He took that last one, and it was out of the zone. Career numbers, one for two against Peavy. Here's the delivery. And he watches one at the knees, and it's one and two. Well, when you throw the fastball, that's where you want it to go. Now you can elevate a pitch next time around. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. One away. Now, now the State Farm leaderboard staff's responsible for the fewest free passes in the league. The White Sox, number one. The Mariners in second. Third, the Rays. Jays, fourth. And number five, the Indians rounded out. It really speaks to the philosophy of the organization when you have the fewest walks given up. They understand they need to throw strikes and let the opposition put the ball in play and trust the defense. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Over to second for one. Now over to first and safe at first. Close play, not quite enough time to get it. J.J. Hardy a runner on first. Last time up, flew out. Hardy settles in first pitch. Checks his swing that time, but it's still a strike on one. Ball. Leaves that one alone. Hardy shows patience, evens it up. Lifetime, one for 11 off Peavy. Sharp bike to that slider, one and two. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. Leaves that one alone. Hardy shows patience, evens it up. When you throw a breaking ball like this. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying oh, run to the plate. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. Number 20. Well, there's no reason in the world for any hitter to want to swing at that pitch. A pitch down out of the strike zone. Never had a chance at all to be a strike. But that's why we're up here talking about it. And he's down there doing it. He can get his bat on that ball to get a hit. Oh, he loses control of that one, and that got him. Well, now the ball just sailed away from him, couldn't control it, now it loads the bases. Now time to shine right here, a chance to be a hero, Gary. Steve, you got to like the odds right here. You get that base hit, and all of a sudden this game changes. Now if he hits one over the ball, too, it completely changes the complexion of this game. They've had to battle back. Here's a chance to get the lead. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And that is in there, the go-ahead run on board. And they bring him home. And Hardy also will score. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Punto at the plate. All important production at this point in the ball game. Cut that deficit, keep pushing. That's what they're after. Now we just saw a quality piece of hitting right there with one swing of the bat. He pulls him within striking distance of the lead right now. Well, we make ground ball towards second. And he's up with it. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So they scratch across two runs, three hits, and two left on. The Twins are making progress. They have cut into the...
here's Paul Canerco. Doubled home a run in his last at bat. Paul Canerco. Slowy with the pitch. Swing, hot shot. What a tremendous catch right there. I mean, what a great effort getting to that ball and making that catch. Carlos Quinton. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. Drew a walk his last time. First pitch to Quinton. A line drive towards short. Two down here in the inning. For the Chicago White Sox. Second base. And Beckham's in the box. He's a perfect three for three in the ball game. A swing and a hit to Span, and he can't get to it. And they can't cut it off. It'll roll to the wall. Now up to the plate. We talk about Chicago a guy who's just off. wearing out Center the opposition. Fielding. That's Number a four-hit 51. day for him. Alex he is locked Rio. in. Alex Rios has been in these situations before and gotten the job done. Let's see if he can get it done again. Lined out in his last at bat. And he starts Rios out. Slow he gets him to swing and miss for a strike. You always want to get that first strike in there as a pitcher because now you can execute your plan to put the guy away. Here's the pitch. Well hit towards the middle. Tolbert throws to first in time. That's three down. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at second. Seventh inning, time to get up in Minneapolis. It's Denard Span to lead off. Two for three thus far. Number two, Denard Span. First pitch to Span. Slider just misses one and all. Uh, down by one, nobody out here in the seventh inning. You want to try to get somebody on base and, and get a little bit of rally because within one, you want to be able to time it and then maybe take the lead. So play for a big inning right here. Here's the one one. Swung on, line softly behind second base. And it's in there, the tying run on board. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. First delivery to Young. Swings and misses the slider. 0-1. Oh my and that's a ball. TV too far outside with it. When you throw a breaking ball like this, you want to start it on the corner and break it off the zone, trying to get the hitter to chase. The hitter didn't take the bait here. Span stealing. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And through for a hit, the go-ahead run is on. Not in time, in there at third. And maybe he wanted to waste that pitch. It just Number didn't get seven. far enough away or up high. Well, no, it just it was still caught a little too much of the plate, and the batter took advantage of it. Good focus of the plate. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. Well, if you can get a start like this every time out from your starting pitcher, you're going to take it. He kept you in the ball game, pitched pretty well, and now turns it over to the bullpen. Here it comes. Ball. And he leaves that one alone. Joe Maurer, patience. That'll even the count. His fourth time around, he's gone one for three off Tony Pena. Started to go around, but a called strike, one and two. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. Well, they needed that one. That's the first out. They need to try to limit the damage in this Justin inning and hold on to that lead. It is Justin Morneau. He can come through big here for Minnesota. And that's too low, 1-0. Oh. No, Gary's still dealing with that one-run differential. One out here in the seventh inning. A swing, line to left center. That base hit could tie this game up. And that's in. They're able to tie it up. One run. That comes in on that play. Let's see how it moves our chart. Brought to you by Pepsi. So here he is, Michael Kadire. 
definitely some clutch production we're seeing out of this lineup, Steve. Uh, Gary, we just saw a quality at bat. They capitalized on the opportunity, and now an opportunity to pull ahead here in this game. So outstanding clutch hitting. Outside for a ball, and it's two and one. And this is where all the errors and or, in this case, the positives really shine because you haven't got a lot of room left. You know, Gary, now if they can manufacture a run and take the lead, it could make all the difference and lead to a victory. He set the 3-1. Swung on, line softly to right. And another. Wow, that hitting coach is smiling. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out the inning. Can it start a rally? Hardy settles in. First pitch. Slider misses badly with it. 1-0. He's batted 0 for 11 over his career off the White Sox. Strike one. Pena evens the count. The pitcher really rearing back and throwing. He's got everything working now. Commanding the strike zone with that fastball. The 2-1 pitch. And it's 3-1. and one. J.J. Hardy's got that count where he wants it. He swings and lines this one softly towards the left side. Now it's two away. And that will keep the bases loaded. Both managers sitting on the edge of the bench right now, understanding this is a critical point in this game. And the runner on third. Uh, the goal, a swing and a fly ball to left center field. Damon. And there's the third out. They pick up four hits in the inning, but manage only one run. We're in a tie game here. Here's a look at Ozzy, Ozzy Gian. And you can feel the hunger building up right now. First and foremost on his mind is getting out of this tie game and getting a lead. Here's the first pitch. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Well, for a ball that had that type of movement on it, that slider had surprising velocity, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. He swung late. Now one away. With the Chicago White Sox, third baseman, number 20. And the batter's box, Mark it's Tian. Struck out swinging last time. Slowy with the pitch. Swing and a rocket towards short. And Hardy's able to get to that one. And Mark Kotze up. Still seeking his first hit of the ball game. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Hit up the middle. Slowy. Throws to first side is retired. No strikeouts. Would you talk about comp? And Pridey's batting. He had a two-run single in his last appearance. A game tied right now, Gary, and obviously he drove in two runs uh, in this game. Let's see if he can do some more. Just missed that one for strike one. Pena with a strike two. Good pitch. A swing and a miss, strike three, but a chance at first. There's the throw. And out, the catcher makes the play. Oh, it's a great play, Gary. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, does a great job retrieving the ball and gunning him out at first. If you're a pitcher, you never want those strikeouts not to get recorded. Good play to be able to get the out at first base. First pitch. Fastball, just misses, 1-0. Five fastball right there just missed just below the knees tell you what a borderline pitch I think they wanted that one bad fastball just misses and he falls behind 2 and 0 lined up the middle and that is in there the go ahead run on base we go now to a list of pitching staffs who have been stellar for the last 10 days State Farm our leaderboard the Mariners number one second the Rays White Sox third the Orioles fourth. Number five, the Royals rounded out. You take a look at these pitching staffs and how successful they've been limiting the opposition in runs scored. That can go a long way to helping a team win. 
Here's a swing and a line drive. Two away. And he'll go back to first. Well, this ball's tattooed. It's flying off the bat for the shortstop. was right there to glove it for the out. Here's the pitch. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1 0. Ready with a 1 0. 1 0 is a fastball that runs away to an 0. Oh, and he takes off for second. He is safe at second base. Swing and a miss by Young. Count knotted up. Now two strikes on the hitter. They're a strike away from getting out of this jam with the game still tied. Hard grounded a short. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws on to first. Side is retired. So they pick up a hit but leave a man at second and fail to score. Taking a look at the veteran manager now, Ron Gardenhire. And at this point, every move is critical. He doesn't get any margin for error. First pitch on the way to Damon. He makes contact. Line drive. Gets down. The go-ahead runs on base. Coming to bat. Well, good piece of hitting right there. And anytime you get your first hitter of the inning on base, it could set up the potential for a big inning. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. Well, he digs in here, Steve. A golden opportunity to be the hero. And with nobody out, they need... That one's drilled to short. Coming to well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in doubles. Fourth in hits. And as you can see, that ability to make contact is there. Hitting for a very high average. Ranked among the top ten hitters in the league. And Paul Canerco to back. He's managed just two hits and 14 at bats. A lifetime against Nathan. Here's the pitch. Back up the middle. And Canerco's got himself a single. Coming to bat. Well, you're talking about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Here's Carlos Quinton. And he can break this tie right here. Well, this has been the perfect start to the inning. Exactly what they wanted. Base runners, now they've got to bring him home. Right. Swinging and a miss. And he falls behind on the count 0-1. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. You're Big out. swing and a miss. Carlos Quentin goes down swinging. Well, it's a big first out right there, but he finds himself still in a jam, in a tie game. Going to be absolutely critical to be aggressive with the next hitter. Now the first pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. There's the run, and it gives them the lead. Coming to bat. We talk about a late inning ball club. They needed a big hit late in the game, in the final inning, and they got it. Clutch hitting, clutch performance. What a team. And we've got Jose Maharas on the mound. He's been chosen to take over out there. Uh, managers face so many different decisions during the course of a game. And as the game goes on and it's close, those decisions become much more critical to success or failure. Sprague started off the at bat 0 and 1. Lifetime 289 off the Twins. Picked up. Yes. One and two. Double play. They pick up four hits in the inning, but manage only one run. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. There's a familiar face, Ozzie Gian looking up. And nearing the end of this one. Tension still in the air. This is only a one run ball game. And Maurer ready for the first pitch. And it's fouled off. Oh. Here's the delivery. And that's a strike. Maurer now will cover that plate with that big bat. 
You got to force him to earn it right now. I think you've got to throw strikes, Gary. No free passes. Ball. No hit by pitches. Don't pitch him inside. Throw away. You don't want to leak one inside and give up a home run. Fouled away. The one two on its way. Strike three, Joe Bauer. He swings right through that one and he is out. Number 33. Good pitch right at the knees there. He swung right over the top of it and just couldn't put it in play. Base is empty with one away. Now Morneau is ready. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And that is in there. The tying run is on base. Well, all pitchers are taught to keep the ball down in the strike zone. Not too many hitters can go down and get one right there in that particular spot. But this guy absolutely loves that pitch. That's why he's on base. So here he is, Michael Kadire. Over five at bats last year, he could not pick up a hit off Tony Pena. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. Chicago's bringing him in to close now. Jenks with a delivery. It's fouled off. Here's the pitch. Popped into foul territory down the left side. Tried to track that one down but comes up empty. Good patience, Michael Kadaya letting it go by. Evens the count. Two two a slider. That misses. Three and two. The three two pitch. Swing and ooh, look out. Line drive that shatters the bat. Well, you wonder he had the energy to run the first base after seeing that many pitches, fouling off pitches, taking tough pitches, but he did. Well, thank goodness he only had to run 90 feet because I'd imagine he was pretty tired. Now, here's the opportunity. Here is J.J. Hardy. And he's at the plate with the possibility of tying this ball game up. Runners on. Well, this is one of those situations you don't want the hitter to put it in play. You need a punch out. First pitch was a strike. 0-1 oh, now. He had an 0-4-11 last year off the White Sox. Hit hard on the ground to short. Got it. It's one and two. They got both of them that time. The offense got it done on the top, and the pitching got it done on the bottom half. And celebration as they head back to the clubhouse. Now we get a recap of one of the outstanding individuals. He's our Pepsi Clutch performer. A lot of times, Gary, you come into a game and you 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 dissect the game through your every at bat. Most of the time, you're only thinking you're going to get four at bats. Well, this guy got five hits today, and the best thing about those five hits is that it meant to leading his team to a win. He'll remember this one for a long time. And they come into hostile territory, Steve, and take this one by one run. Well, both teams had a chance to win it. Goes down to the very end, but the visiting club outplayed them. Well, that time again, thanks for being with us today, Major League Baseball. For Steve Phillips, John Crock, and the rest of our great 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks, everybody.